Hello and welcome back to freephotoshop.com and part 8 in this series of preferences inside Photoshop Elements. In this video we're going to be discussing guides and grids and before we hit preferences I'd like to just run you through a few quick basics so that we're on the same wavelength. So if I come up here to the view menu and then come down to select the grid command we will in fact be turning on Photoshop's non-printing reference grid and you'll find this coming in more helpful when designing rather than photographic work such as colour corrections. A guide is something we can come up here to the ruler bar and subsequently drag out and place in the image. Once again it's a non-printing object that's there for reference. We can also pull guides out from the vertical ruler too and hopefully you can see them on your screen at home these thin cyan lines right here and the idea is once we've got them into place we can use them to align objects on the page or anything else really that you want to do with them um, but remember they are there simply as a reference if you print the document with these ruler marks active they will not print alright I'll use the keyboard shortcut of control or command K to open up preferences and then control or command 7 to open up the guides and grid panel and here lies all the options associated with those guides and grids we just looked at. So as far as the guides go, that's these cyan lines, we can change the colour to anything in this list. So I'll go for red in this example. We can also click the swatch over here on the right to select a more accurate colour and that's going to help if the colour of the guide falls into the same colours and patterns you already have in the image. I'll cancel out of here though because light red is fine for my purpose. We can also select between guides consisting of a plain line or a dashed line. Next up we can make changes to our default grid. First of all changing the colour like we did with the guides. This time I'll go for something that neither clashes with the yellow cab or the light red guides. So something like this medium blue will work out quite nicely I'd say. We also get options to change the type of lines that make up the grid. So either a plain line which we're using now by default, a dash line or a series of dots. We can also change the colour of the whole grid by the way by clicking on this swatch over here on the right hand side exactly as we did with the guides above. We also get to change the frequency of grid line which accounts for all the lines that make up the grid and we can choose to do that for any specific measurements. I'm going to leave this as is but if you're going to be using grid lines on a regular basis then my advice would be to work with pixels. We can also change the frequency of subdivisions so if you look closely at the grid at the moment we have a subdivision on every fourth line which is represented by a slightly thicker line than the others. By changing the subdivisions we change the frequency of those thicker lines. So if we change it to 10 we get a subdivision every 10 lines. And that's all there is to it. Well thanks as always for joining me here at freephotoshop.com and I'll see you in the next video to explore plugins and type. See you there.